Volkswagen needs an image makeover in the United States. Right now, it's known for making small cars and crossovers. Some of them have weird names and or spew toxic diesel fumes. Americans aren't big fans of either of those things. VW, however, has a perfectly timed solution, a three-row sport utility vehicle built in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It will have a strong V6, all-wheel drive, and a name, still not revealed, that the company promises will resonate with U.S. buyers. Now we're talking. The SUV has been in development for years, as evidenced by the Cross Blue, 2013, and the Cross Coupe GTE, 2015, concepts, but its production launch in December gives VW something that directly aligns with the needs of American families. It's also a reason to talk about something not related to the diesel emissions situation. VW badly needs to move away from the nearly year-long scandal that soiled the image of its signature technology. This SUV gives Volkswagen a fighting chance for change. Critically, the new vehicle appears to be well done. We tested a pre-production model on an off-road course in the scenic Prentice Cooper State Forest about 10 miles west of Chattanooga. The UTA was heavily covered in black wrapping inside and out, and the company still isn't releasing specs, so our first experience was fairly limited. But, after a half hour behind the wheel, we can tell you this three-rower has the confidence and demeanor of its future rivals, like the Honda Pilot, Chevy Traverse, Toyota Highlander, and Ford Explorer. We tested the likely bread-and-butter V6 model with an 8-speed automatic transmission and 4-motion all-wheel drive. This 3.6-liter unit makes 280 horsepower and 258 pound-to-foot of torque in the Passat sedan, though we expect more juice under the hood of the UTA. It felt capable as we took off through the forest, rocks and dirt trailing in our wake. The engine sounded good and the shifts were smooth though we may be hit 45 miles per hour. Even during the roughest patches, including one moment where a steep hill tossed the front end upward dramatically, the vehicle was not phased. We splattered mud, smushed through the dirt, and pretty much had a fun little adventure. Visibility was excellent thanks to the thinny pillars, though we still managed to rip off some small tree branches in the deeper parts of the trail. There were several driving modes, which are operated via a circular knob in the center console. Naturally, we used off-road for most of our drive, and its hill descent feature modulated the powertrain as we crept down a bumpy slope. We did pop it into sport mode on the way back to the trailhead. The vehicle felt a little livelier as we crunched over a gravel trail, and the steering grew heavier. In the off-road setting, the steering was very light, though that's the idea for slow speeds. Once we drive it on real highways and surface streets, we'll have a clearer picture of its all-around dynamics. The cabin offered an upright view of the road exactly what Americans want in this segment. The infotainment system had a crisp LCD touchscreen and looked slick, and the panoramic sunroof is sure to be a popular feature. We sat in the second and third rows, which were comfortable and offered ample head and legroom for a 5'9 Auto blog editor. Taller Volkswagen executives, like the company's 6'4 North American chief, Heinrich Wobken, also appeared to fit reasonably well. Clad in a white dress shirt and blue pants, he maneuvered into the back easily. You can really travel long distances in the third row, he said. The seats can fold forward and move on rails to ease entry, another selling point, and they can also be adjusted even with car seats still strapped in.